I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, this pretty much I like discussions, you know, as, as I'm going through my presentation. So if anybody has anything to kind of contribute uh, to the talk, um, you know, please feel free to, to stop me and let's, let's talk about it. Um, I'm more heavy on content than I am on slides this time, so uh, I don't have a lot of slides to go through. Um, so uh, I, I just enjoy the talking part of it, honestly. So uh, <clears throat> my name is Adam Sewell, and why did it go out? Hmm. Technical difficulties. All right, there we go. Adam Sewell, I own My Geek Technologies. Um, we're an IT uh, support firm, I guess, uh, located in Lexington, North Carolina. Uh, we do IT support for small businesses, nonprofits, et cetera. Um, the, the way I got into WordPress is actually through, uh, I did freelance web development uh, prior to opening up uh, My Geek Technologies. My background is in system administration. Uh, I was a network administrator at Catawba College in Salisbury for, I, I worked there a total of about 10 years, uh, and then I went out on my own um, <clears throat> doing freelance and then started My Geek Technologies. And I, I told everybody in the room before, I apologize, I'm, I've got some serious sinus stuff going on right now after lunch f for some reason, so I apologize. Um, I am the father of two. My eldest, oldest daughter is Emma. She is six. I uh, just turned that on April the 14th. Uh, my youngest is Ellie. She's three. Um, husband of one, my wife Mary. And uh, I'm from Lexington, North Carolina, which is, uh, has a population of 18,931. And the reason that I put the population on the slides is because it's ridiculous how many times I get asked that question. How big is Lexington? How many people live in Lexington? I did not know the first time I looked uh, or somebody asked me that question. So I decided to just to go ahead and include that to get that out of the way, frequently asked questions. So, um, some previous talks that I have done at WordCamps, um, and I actually apologize, I forgot that these links do not work. Uh, so I will send out, uh, I'll tweet out the uh, updated version after this. Um, <clears throat> but I gave a talk in Asheville in 2015 on customer service and the freelancer, um, WordPress business, the basics in Asheville 2014, and beyond SEO, which is really kind of a marketing, um, networking type talk. Uh, in Raleigh in 2013. If you want to follow today's slides, uh, again, these ha this has the, the broken links, but you can follow along uh, here if you want to pull those up in PDF format. I'll give you a minute to jot that down or pull it up. Is everybody falling asleep after lunch? Yeah. Get some energy going. Hey, you missed the cat videos. Oh. All right. So, how many people have a WordPress website th that is just a website? Nothing else. You do nothing else with it. You don't blog. You just provide information. Okay. The, how many uh, use it for other things other than blogging and informational purposes? What do you use it for? Okay. Yes, we're, we're going to talk about that. Okay. Yes. You you down for your for your um. Right, right. Okay. So you you provide links for other people to download your music, view that. Okay, gotcha. Uh, who else? Yes, ma'am. Courses. Okay. Okay. So like a membership type thing where they come in, they... Sort of, kind of, yeah. Okay. It's a membership plug to control it, but yeah, that's what's Great. Okay. But I also use an LMS. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Maintain e-commerce. Okay. What, uh, what do you sell on it? Right on. Okay. I like it. I uh, did some work on a site uh, way back when that uh, was something similar to that. That was cool. Um, so obviously, e-commerce. That uh, puts a perfect segue. Um, so obviously, the whole point of this talk, by the way, is it was what you can do outside of, of WordPress 
um, <coughs> it's just a website. Uh, it's really a platform that you can build off of. Most people don't know that. Most clients don't know that. Um, they think, okay, well, I want a website. Um, at least in my experience, uh, they'll come to me. We need a website. I don't really care, you know, uh, about all this other stuff. We just need to get our name out there. We need to put use it for marketing, et cetera, et cetera. Most, I guess by now, most people know that you can kind of do some e-commerce on, on websites, uh, on WordPress specifically. Um, so, but that's the most obvious answer. Um, WooCommerce users, raise your hands. All right. Um, easy digital downloads. All right. What do you sell with, with easy digital downloads? Music. Okay. Right on. There's a musician right here. If you uh, raise your hand, yeah. If you need, if you need some content. Um, <clears throat> so obviously that is the uh, that's the most obvious um, way to extend WordPress is is through e-commerce. I work with several uh, large um, uh, websites that sell various things from tactical night gear vision equipment to um, uh, gun manufacturer holst uh, they manufacture holsters. Um, until, like I said, I've done some work with some uh, clothing before. Uh, and so, I mean, that's, it's a, that is a huge, huge market, obviously. Um, WooCommerce blew everybody out of the water when they first came out. So, but most of y'all probably already know that. Um, so, <clears throat> one of the other uh, ways that I've used uh, WordPress uh, to, as more than just a website is nonprofit board management. Is anybody else in here involved with nonprofits? Yes, ma'am. We do. Mm hmm Yep. Yep. Who else? I saw some other hands. Donations. Okay. Uh, for, what's nonprofit? Okay. All right. Promote your businesses, promote your nonprofits. What else? Orchestra, okay. You're very music oriented back there, I hear you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Right on, okay, very cool. Uh, all, of, all of these non, yes, sir. Uh huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and we're going to talk about events here in a second, so um, I'd be interested to know how y'all did it. Um, so I'm involved with a local chamber of commerce, the Lexington Area Chamber of Commerce. For some reason, they decided that it would be a good idea to put me as chairman of the board. I don't know why that was a good idea, but they wanted it. So <coughs> we developed their initial website. Um, they, um, they use a product called Chamber Master. Has anybody ever heard of Chamber Master? Yes, it sucks. Um, and I'm sorry, it sucks. Yeah, so we're very, very uh, gradually graduating them from Chamber Master to uh, a purely WordPress based platform, which includes, um, and we'll get there again, but part of that includes uh, the, the board management, right? So we can go in with this plugin uh, from Wired Impact. Um, it's called. Uh, um, uh, nonprofit board management. You can track your board members, you can track committees, you can track the resources or give them the resources that they, uh, that they need. Um, and I'm fairly certain that they have to uh, authenticate to get into uh, the back end to get all this stuff. And I could be wrong on that. Um, we're in the very early stages of this. So, um, and a lot of this is, if you've ever worked with a nonprofit, you know, is just purely, you know, trying to convince them to change to something new. Uh, you know, change is obviously very uh, scary for most people. So, it, it, a lot of meetings, a lot of going over what it can do, you know, when it actually takes the time to implement it, it's like 10 seconds. So, um, <clears throat> so this is kind of, with all of what we're going to talk about you know, today, it's really putting it all in, under one roof. It makes it so much easier for management as, as a web person. Um, and you know, you don't. It, one of the and one of the issues that I'd ran into. Um, let's see, so, yeah, the, one of the issues that I'd ran into with the um, with the Lexington Chamber of Commerce is the, their business directory, which was done originally in Chambermaster. 
So the way that I had to pull that in to the website because they did not initially want to change off of Chambermaster was through iframes. I hate iframes. They did, they did not, Chambermaster would not provide me with any kind of API to pull out the data. So re-entry re of all data into a business directory plugin. Um, we actually work with a, uh, another nonprofit uh, that is sort of a merchant, um, it's kind of a Main Street re revitalization uh, nonprofit, um, kind of like a, uh, it's basically geared around economic development. Um, it's called Uptown Lexington. So, uh, and we kind of keep track of the members and things like that. So if somebody goes into, um, goes to the website, they can uh, go down based on categories uh, to, okay, I want to go, I want to see what all my food options are for that, you know, for the area. Uh, so that you can kind of drill down that way. Um, <clears throat> in the same way with uh, the Chamber of Commerce, you can kind of put them in different categories, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so business directories, anybody run a business directory? Mediators. Mediators, okay. Okay, all right. And what, what plugin do you use for that? Gotcha, okay, very cool. Well. There you go, there's some options. Uh, business directory plugin, geo directory. Uh, I feel like I'm in trouble that the two lead fellows are here. Should, should, everything cool? All right, cool, yeah, all right. Um, <clears throat> it, it, other business directories? Well, I want to start one. Yes, okay, what do you want to start? I want to do a, I bought a podcast. Okay. Right on, okay. Very cool, very cool. Uh, any idea um, of what you're going to use for it yet? Or Very cool. Uh, anybody else? Okay. So when you come across as a, as a developer and you, uh, or a you know, freelancer and you come across a client that needs a um, you know, uh, business director or whatever, here we are. Support ticketing uh, or ticketing systems, help desk. Anybody provide customer support on WordPress? What do you use? Manual? How do you uh, handle your tickets? No. <laughs> fair point, fair point, fair point, fair point. Um, so, all right. So when I first started my IT business uh, back in 2010-ish, um, I had uh, I was looking for a ticketing system, and what was available to me was either too high in price that I really didn't because the free tier was not really a thing um, back then. It was you know especially when you get into ticketing systems uh, for IT support because they bundle it with a bunch of other stuff. But anyways, so I decided that I was just I had the time and I have the background. I was just going to write my own. So for the first probably seven years. Um, six years, I uh, used a ticketing system that was email based um, and it loaded directly into WordPress. So when I logged into the, my back end of my website, which is mygeeknc.com, if anybody wants to bring it up, um, actually I'll bring it up. Just sh uh, shameless self-promotion. Um, so <clears throat> when I logged into the back side of our, my website, um, I, could hand, I could see all my tickets, you know, just like a regular post. Uh, and this is Lexington, by the way. Beautiful little town, My Geek Technologies. Um, but on the back end, I, would, uh, I could go in and see all my tickets. And since then, um, and that, that plugin is actually still out on GitHub if anybody wants to play around with it. I do not actively develop it anymore. It's called Simple Desk. Uh, but there are some other options now, Awesome Support and Support Plus. Um, now, we, my business is a service-based business. Um, plumbers, electricians, anybody that works off of work orders or uh, invoices, things like that, um, on a per-job basis, something like this would be perfect for them. Um, anybody done a plumbing website, plumber's website? Do that, how do they handle their, their tickets, do you know? Uh, not through the website. Gotcha. So um, again, it just kind of puts everything into a nice little package. Um, they can just log into the back of the website. They can manage their, in, their work orders for the day and things like that. 
Uh, this worked very, very well for us, and I actually hated moving off of it, but I just didn't have the time to develop the plugin that I had written any longer, and, and I was needing some reports and things written, and I just decided to go with a paid solution at that point. Um, so uh, electricians, you know, uh, it, any service, throw some uh, service-based names out, uh, service-based businesses out um, that you've worked with. Um, sort of. There, there's some other plugins that can handle real estate, um, but th that mainly work off like work orders and you know service calls, things like that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, you can. Um, so, like with some, um, the, with what uh, I don't know about these two in particular, but. Uh, you know, going through your work orders, going through your invoices um, or, your, or your tickets, and then pushing them off to like QuickBooks or things like that, uh, that would be the kind of workflow that, in, it, that I would go through. So once a ticket is resolved, and then you would just push that over to billing or, you know, accounts receivable, whatever. Um, so that it, it's kind of a seamless transition. So um, again, I don't know specifically for these two, but, um, you know, that's, you could always make a feature request if that's something you want to go into. Yes, sir. Oh, absolutely. Any, any, any support, um, any support based business. I mean, as freelancers, we support a lot of people and you, and I, I know I have to have tickets or I'm going to forget something. Um, I saw your hand. Uh, uh, yeah. We have a business where we have a lot of equipment mailed to customers and shipped. Right. And then we turned the clients into pretty much in the United States. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So with WordPress. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and uh, that's going to be up to the plugin developers themselves. I mean that that, and I mean, uh, let me take a look real quick. Because that is a very handy um, feature, if they do have it. Awesome. What did I say? Awesome support. QuickBooks. Yes. Yep. Um, so we do. I don't specifically see it uh, right off, but. Ah, yes, I did. Did not help. But, you know, that could be a, uh, a feature request that's made. Uh, just something to throw it over into. Uh, well, it integrates with WooCommerce. Maybe you could. Uh, It'd just be really nice because right now we're just having a canteen. Yeah. From communication and stuff. Mm hmm. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And, and that's what I did for a long time. Um, my <laughs> office manager did that. And that, the, the system that we have now, which is not WordPress based, but we have that option to throw it into QuickBooks when, you know, when it gets to a certain point. Um, so if anybody has any contacts with uh, the developers of these guys, it might be a good feature to add or a good plugin to develop yourself, uh, and th which is the beauty of WordPress. So you said, uh, Emma, yes, sir. So, so that's that, that simple because for my web based clients yeah. where I put instead of a contact form on mm -hmm. the page, I just make them a little bit simpler. Right. So the way that I handle it, um, both with uh, web, my web host, uh, with my web, website clients and my IT clients, is we have a uh, email address support at mygeeknc.com. Um, subject details of the issue, they send it to the that email address, it automatically creates a ticket. Um, that's actually one of the things, uh, I think I saw that one. It might be under remote tickets. Uh, I think it was email. 
email support maybe yeah emails to be address uh, emails to be sent to an ad, ad, yeah. emails to be sent to an email address and then automatically imported into the ticket system so that's what you're looking for um, the way that it works on uh, or the way that it worked on the plugin that I had written was that it would just create them a customer record and it would then uh, if they had never emailed before and it would be based on the uh, domain so like if uh, I have a client that has multiple users uh, under the same domain, um, then it would just kind of bundle them all together under that domain. So, but yeah, that is super handy. Um, I, I've never been a big fan of you know the the forms, the submitting forms, and for ticket you know uh, management and things like that. So, most everybody can email support at mygeekNC.com. So, any other? Yeah. Do you, ever, do you ever get people like sending tickets? Yes. Yep. Uh, and I actually have my contact form uh, being uh, sent to our ticketing system, and, and it's just simply because I can keep up with it that way. Um, it, I get probably 200 emails a day, and if it's not in that ticket system, I, I have a tendency just to glance over my email and try to get it down to zero, just so I can't. You know, just because the numbers bug me. I may not respond to it, but the ticket system makes me respond to it. So. I have not, actually. I, I'm not. I've never really uh, went that route for WordPress, but that's, you know, uh, if there's not something, it would be. Did you have a... Project Panorama. Okay. Yeah. 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 How many people uh, do project management? I know you do. You do everything back there. Is it music? If it's music related. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I do, I do project management, but we use Trello. So, um, now. But, um, in, in years prior, we would just create a ticket for it and just set, set it as a project rather than a support ticket. So, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, there would have to be some kind of connector between the two. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, is it? A, oh, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's like WooCommerce. I mean, if you know, if you have the uh, the platform already there, a third-party developer can come in and create that uh, that connectivity, that connector piece, um, to uh, to achieve that that goal. And it would, I mean, if you've got one person asking for it, there's probably ten more in in a in a setting that would uh, that would benefit from that. The beauty of WordPress. Any other questions about ticketing, support ticketing? So. Uh, event management, that's another big one. Um, WordCamps are probably one of the uh, biggest, uh, I would say, platform uh, to sell, that sells event tickets. Um, and obviously they use WordPress. There's a, there's a custom, I don't, know if, I don't know if it's public, but there's a, tick, uh, a WordPress plugin that manages all the WordCamp tickets and uh, scheduling and things like that. Um, what's that? It is. I, I can't remember the name of it. I was looking for it. I just. Yeah. I, yeah. But <clears throat> so pretty much every WordCamp that you go to, uh, real quick, how many people? This is their first WordCamp. Wow. Yay! <laughs> how many people are impressed so far? Awesome. Um, so yeah, um, that's awesome. I hope I don't disappoint you. Uh, but so um, there's obviously thousands and thousands and thousands of of or, uh, word camps that have occurred or are occurring. I think there's four this weekend. Uh, I think Chicago's happening. Um, obviously Raleigh, and there's two other ones that I can't think of. What's that? Detroit. Detroit's happening this weekend as well. Huh? Yeah, somewhere over in Europe. I just don't remember exactly where. 
Um, but there's other there's other platforms as well. Um, we do a again through the Chamber of Commerce. We do a uh, um, a summer concert series um, that, that uh, could very well be ticketed uh, through through one of these plugins. Um, we use uh, Trab uh, Modern Tribes, uh, the the event manager um, or their event plugin, to uh, schedule all the events that happens through uh, the Chamber of Commerce. And <coughs> when we go to sell tickets or RSVP, uh, it's very easy to do that right through the word through their plugin. Um, I know everybody's heard, that, you know, there's an app for that. Honest to God, there is a plugin for whatever you want to do on WordPress besides, you know, just being a, word, uh, a website. Um, anybody use e any of these guys right here? What's this one on the left? Uh, so the guy, little guy right here, uh, that's Modern Tribes, the event, uh, event calendar. There you go. Modern Tribe. Um, It's probably one of the best WordPress plugins I've used. Um, I'll show you in, in action. So right here on the sidebar, these are all the events that's coming up for the Lexington Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, Maybe a year-ish, two years? Way yeah. Oh, you, did you? Are, are you from Lexington? Lexington? Did you? Okay, right on. Um, well, so we, uh, it was originally developed by the um, uh, community college. Some community college students developed it. Um, it was not on WordPress. And then uh, they, uh, they're one of our IT clients. So <coughs> we went and uh, they, they got to, uh, just in conversation, most people in Lexington actually do not know that I do WordPress anything, um, and I kind of like it that way, to be honest. Um, so we're just kind of known for IT, but if they come to me and say, hey, I need some help with a website, or I need my website, uh, I need a website, then I'm like, ah, oh, I know people. So, um, but uh, we took it and we kind of redeveloped it. Um, and like I said, the two, th two main things that I'm working on right now are the business directory, which, Chamber master. I just I ended up just uh, directly linking to what they have, and I can't stand it. So uh, I don't even like to look at it. Uh, but that's my next goal is to get that uh, to get that all integrated in, so that you don't really have that. Right now, when a new member comes in, uh, or actually an event too, when they get a new member, they have to go to Chamber master, put it in there. Then they have to go to WordPress and put it in there. And I just want it on one, one platform, just super simple. Post to the website, make events. The easier it is for the customer, then the easier your life will be. So, um, so like going back to events, um, apparently there's a Watercolor Society of North Carolina, which I had no idea about, uh, or is doing a, a show, a traveling show on this date, and so on and so forth. And if we, ha if we wanted to, we could very well sell tickets to this um, through, through Modern Tribe or any of the other two plugins. And all of that's done, again, through the back end. It's, it's more than a website. Anybody sell tickets to events? Or did I already ask that one? Sure. Uh, for a store like a like a low, like a physical store and sell gift cards on the site, sure. Yeah, WooCommerce. That's um, well, essentially what that would be is like a virtual product, um, and uh, I'm I'm sure there are gift uh, coupon gift card plugins out there uh, for that. Maybe not a coupon, but a gift card plugin is is what you're looking for for something like WooCommerce. You just create the product, throw a little image in it. Um, whatever details you know the the plugin needs and uh yeah so any other questions yeah sure yeah. so let's go let's go to uh, 
Now, Modern Tribe has a separate um, event tickets and event tickets plus. So, <coughs> with with just the base plugin, it's RSVP essentially, right? So, um, now I've not personally used the the ticketing the, the, their ticketing system, but um, I kind of leave that up to the, the client when they want it. But uh, they do have support for it. Um, is there something specific you want to see, just like how how it's done or? Um, let's see. Let's mm hmm yep. Well, no, it's your plugin. Did I take a portion? Mm-mm. It, it would probably be a percentage of, the like, the gateway, uh, whatever gateway you're using. Oh, right, for that, that's the, that's, yeah, well, that would be like Stripe. Yeah. So, like, if you use Stripe as a payment gateway, they take, I think it's like 3% or something like that of the total price. But other than that, no, I don't believe there's anything that's taken out by, like, the plugin itself. Uh, we, we did a comparison at the beginning of the year for a, a question. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Charge, charge the fee plus the gateway. Mm, okay. So they probably they provide the platform for you, and then they, they the for for free. And uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they have sort of a directory of all the events that, that they have. Okay, that makes sense. And visually, it's very important. Sure, sure. Then we event manager pro because we needed a plugin to. Okay, that, that, that's a separate plug. That's a different plugin, gotcha. Okay, could have required two separate ones at the same time. Yeah. Sure. So we ended up using gravity. Yeah. So one of the things that we've run into with the chamber uh, is having people actually RSVP to events in general. People do not like to give information for a just to RSVP to an event. Um, they, if they're paying a ticket, if they're buying a ticket, they will give more information. Um, if uh, I'm even bad about this, I'll, I'll just either text one of the office people and tell them I'm coming to this event, please RSVP me. Um, which, you know, I, feel, I guess I'm a little privileged, but, uh, <coughs> but you know, we try to get, they, they really like to be able to, and I get it from a, you know, from an event standpoint, they try really hard to RSVP so we know how many people to, um, uh, to, uh, to expect. But, um, no, you're right, you're right. So, has anybody tackled that problem before, how to get people to RSVP? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on. So I mean, yeah. Usually, and, and usually, what I have found with that is, um, if there's a cost associated with it, ten dollars, five dollars, eight dollar, people are more likely to show up to an event that they've shelled out money for. Yeah. If it's a free event, yeah, I'll sign up and I'll never show. And we've, we've seen that a lot. And then, obviously, the bigger problem is getting people to RSVP at all. So um, I, I, that maybe there's not a good solution for it. How many people actually RSVP to events on, the regular, on a regular basis? Wow. Okay. I was not expecting that. Um, so why do you RSVP? Let me ask you that question. <laughs> What's that? It's the right thing to do. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, 
and uh, we did a, a, a little uh, a get together, I guess, uh, after hours event uh, through the chamber, uh, probably three months ago or so, where we had food catered in, um, and we had we actually had 40 people. It, it was a free event. Uh, we had 40 people that are, that did actually RSVP. I think we ended up with about 10 people and a shit ton of food left over. And so we just, uh, it was at a, uh, one of our local five bars in Lexington. I don't know if anybody's been around me uh, this weekend, I've talked about the five bars that's in Lexington because we can now honestly bar hop in Lexington. And I, I, don't, think, I don't think that anybody honestly understands how big of a deal that is for Lexington, North Carolina. Is so, still no. The county's wet? County's wet. Dang. Uh huh. Right. See? See? She understands. She gets it. Uh, so, right. So, um, so anyway, I mean, we, that, that, but that's, you know, that's a good, uh, that, that's a business issue that there's really not a good answer for. Um, if somebody ever figures that out, they can make a lot of money. So, um, I, yes, ma'am. I saw something. Sure. Was, uh, tickets required, but no cost. So they wanted you to get a ticket. Mm-hmm. But it was free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure, sure. Wow. How much was a ticket? It was free. Okay. So as a, just to kind of counter that real quick. Yeah. Last June, I threw a, um, I put together a uh, farm to table event in, in Lexington. Uh, tickets, I, I got three local chefs, um, and one of our local uh, mixologist bartenders. Uh, to come in and make drinks, and we had uh, all the food was donated, well, not donated, but purchased at a reduced rate through our local farms. And <clears throat> tickets were $75. Uh, I limited the sale of those tickets to 75 people. And <clears throat> um, I think it was 75. We sold out, and we had 100% attendance. Because, and I, I yeah, and, I, and it, food was there, good food was there. Um, and you know, it, it was the alcohol and everything was uh, you know um, um, included in the price. And <clears throat> but I, and I really think that there may be something associated with the price of the ticket when they put that much investment in in a ticket they show. Yes, ma'am. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yep. Their, their big decision will be, am I going to pay for that ticket? Because if I pay for that ticket, I'm going to show up. Yeah. That's why I have invested over. Yeah. Does it say a hand? We did limited exclusivity. Mm-hmm. Exclusivity. Yep. Fear of missing out. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, ma'am. We hear this in the chart, but there's sometimes mm -hmm. my background. Right. But the show rate is pretty much for a free event. But if you do want to show up, if you call, yay, and then you don't call the people and follow up and say, hey, I'm so excited that you're the day before, send an email to my after you. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And reminders, email reminders. Um, you know, uh, when that, when you uh, when somebody registers, or if if they register for an event, or maybe you have an email list of pe people that have come to events before, just blast that thing, blast your email list. True. That's kind of interesting. 
Yeah. So so require a deposit. Huh. That really. That's kind of interesting. That might be a way around your. Uh, yeah, that's good. See, this is why I love word camps. Okay, so um, he said that. Uh, or do you want to say it again? Yeah. Can you can you hear him? Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> so that that kind of, that would be perfect for a nonprofit. Absolutely, that's a donation. That that would be perfect. So yeah. Any other questions on that? That's great. Um, well, uh, we got about fifteen more minutes. Yes, ma'am. One idea: uh, the more you know about internet security, the more you know that. It's so. <laughs> Amen. Certain websites I go to, yeah. they ask too much. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. They have a guest spot, yep. and I can just put in my email. I have an email that I use for the thing. Right. Do it. Yeah. If they want to know anything else, I want to do it. Right. And I think that a lot of companies and a lot of people that are sell, 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 make a mistake. Saying that hmm. they are the product, they don't want the product. Right. So some companies have a place where you do guests for events. It's the same thing. They put your name everywhere. Right. So why don't events have a thing that says guest in? And you can be guest one, guest two, guest four. It can respond to your email. Right. But they don't put your information in public to everybody so they know where you are and they know your house is empty, etc. <laughs> it's just a thought. Yeah, yeah. Well, then I have to do your email. Dear subscribe. Because you didn't put in your personal. <laughs> and I've got a reason I did it. Yeah, Which right. Yeah. So what some people do, um, or at least I know I've done it in the past, is um, create like different email addresses for uh, different email addresses. So like I have an email address specifically for you know registrations, and I have a rule uh, in, in my um, inbox that just puts all the events into a certain folder, and I never see them. Thank God. Um, and that way, if that if my email does, if that email address does get sold or whatever. Then you can just say, okay, well, I'm done with that one. So, yes, ma'am. There you go. Do not reply. Do not send at yeah, mygeekandc.com. If you don't publish your name. So I think I think he's saying that if if you don't provide your name uh, when you sign up for an event, uh, you, you then become anonymous, and you, that we don't really know if you're going to show up or not. Is what is what he's saying? Okay, for a paid event, you would have the name and the credit card information. Yeah. For an unpaid event, I don't know. Something yeah, I mean, and, and that that's really the fine line of trying to figure all this out. I mean, uh, for another example, um, there was an event that we ha uh, hosted. Um, with the local community college. And um, the community college had, was handling all the event registration. And they were asking for first name, last name, email address, physical address, phone number, 
Uh, and I actually, I think they may have even asked for like the last four of your social security number. <laughs> and I'm like, and, and you, guess how many people we actually had to register? Like two. And then they were like, well, you know, why is nobody registering this event kind of flop? Well, you're asking for a lot of damn information. So, I mean, you, you have to, there's a really fine line that you have to walk when you're having people register for events. So, and, but apparently the best way is to uh, either charge for the event and, um, or you know, charge and then donate back, so, or give back. So, that's, that's cool. I really like that. Why? Yeah, like, what was the uh, <laughs> it had been talked about for years uh, in Lexington. Uh, there was uh, something that kind of, and this totally off of, on a tangent, but it had been talked about for years in Davidson County, and nobody really put together a team to do it or, or whatever. And um, I, I just got tired of hearing about it, and so I was like, you know what, I'm going to do it. Um, so me and uh, where my office is in Lexington, there's a, um, a restaurant right next door, literally next door, um, that I just kind of go eat at sometimes because um, it's convenient. And the chef and I just kind of got to know each other and talk a lot, and uh, he, we got on that topic. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. So I put together the team, I actually funded the whole thing, and um, didn't do any kind of sponsorships or anything like that. Um, and... Um, it, that's just kind of, I, I did it so, because, number one, it was good marketing for me. And, 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 and it, oh, absolutely, it's a form of marketing. Um, uh, and um, just because I wanted to see it happen. So it was sponsored. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we ended up breaking even, um, honestly. Uh, we actually, I, I think I actually purchased too much alcohol for the event. Um, I think I overestimated how much people would drink. Uh, and we actually had some food left over as well. Um, but uh, we broke even. Um, I, th I think I'm, um, I am had about $100 left over that I just kind of gave out to some nonprofits. So food. Cool yeah. <laughs> and I, we were going to do another one this year, uh, but some of the staff um, uh, at the different pl venues and things had changed. And I just, I, not really in a position really that I wanted to deal with it this year. We may look at it again next year, but it, if anybody wants to see it, it's uh, filled to fork and see. Um, Eighteen thousand nine hundred and thirty-one. That's the city of Lexington. Um, I, I, I put that on there for that reason. Um, yep. So this is uh, this is. The website for uh, the Field to Fork NC, uh, which is what we had, we had done. Um, uh, we were planning to do one June 21st of this year, but it's not, it's not going to happen. It fell through. So I guess I need to put up a not going to happen. Uh, we got covered by the news, uh, uh, Fox 8 out of uh, High Point. Um, we got some a dispatch article out of it, uh, which is our local newspaper. Um, yeah, I mean, we got some good press out of it. Facebook blew up. Uh, and, I mean, I, I, you always know that an event went well when everybody does not leave, like, especially a, a meal, if they don't leave after the final course. Um, we had people stay until, the event was over at 9. We had people stay till 11. Um, we had live music, um, just a guy that was playing acoustic guitar. I mean, uh, it, it was at a vineyards. Um, it was pretty cool. So... Actually, I definitely want to do it again, but uh, I just got to make sure all the pieces line up. So, uh, this is and, and this is a good example of a website that you know, event ticketing and things like that. I totally forgot about this um, until we got to talking about it. So, any other questions? Uh, Genesis um, responsive from CyberChimps. Um, I've used uh, iThemes Builder before, uh, so it's. Really, all over the place. I don't have a go-to. Yeah. What was your very first? It was a um, CTX EasyBook laptop, running Windows ninety-five. That's what I learned to code HTML in. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> okay. Sure. Absolutely. Um, all right, right on. Yeah, uh, so uh, I, in 2000, December 31st, 2009, uh, was my last day as network administrator at Catawba College. Uh, and I'd worked there since about 2000 and, or no, 1999, I think. Um, I was working in the summer. I started out working in the summers in the library cataloging books. My mom was a librarian there. Oh, I hated it. Um, and then I just kind of gradually got into, um, uh, the library was in the same building as the computer services department. And so I'd see all the guys kind of go in and out while I was sitting there cataloging books. And um, my mom, uh, like I said, was a librarian there, so she kind of got into uh, talking with um, the computer services guys and got me a part-time job. And so uh, I started working help desk and stuff like that, and just kind of built that up. Um, <clears throat> in December, uh, or 2000, December 31st, 2009, I, I quit um, and started just doing freelance work, basically. Um, before WooCommerce, there was an e-commerce, and it still exists, um, uh, e-commerce plugin called Shop, S-H-O-P-P. -P. Has anybody heard of it? I know Ray has. Okay, so I did all of the support work for Shop when it came out. Um, the, the lead developer is Jonathan Davis. Uh, he's from Ohio. Um, he, uh, about two years ago, I think, he uh, got a job with Apple and moved to California. Um, he still is the uh, lead developer of Shop, but um, he hired me on to do all the support work. And then gradually, um, it was a work, my first work from home job, and I was paid you know, per ticket and et cetera, et cetera. But as I was doing that, I was also building my freelance uh, client base. And so what I would do is, you know, I, I would get that income from shop, I would get my freelance income, and I would put that into what is now my geek. And I worked out of my house um, and <coughs> started, so I, I, had my, I had my web clients, and I started um, going to like local networking events. Um, like, is anybody familiar with BNI? I know Ray is. So I, I'm in BNI. I started networking with local businesses that way. They got me in touch with other people, um, and it just kind of branched out from there. Um, local chamber of commerce. Um, I, I think you asked, how did I get them as a client? Um, I actually just went in one day. I, I think I did, just basically did a cold call and just dropped in one day. They were using another company. Um, I gave them a card, gave them my information, and nine times out of 10, uh, you're not gonna get a client that way if you're an in-person, you know, going in and just dropping off stuff. It comes about by having a positive reputation in the community. So you, you do some work for these people over here, you build up, and I think you're doing a talk on this, aren't you? Is it later today, 4.30? 4.30. Uh, Ray's doing a talk on networking. Uh, if you're interested in that, definitely go see his talk. Um, and um, so it's just, you know, kind of getting out there, getting in front of people, getting to know people. And, and the main thing to remember when you're networking is people do business with people they like. If, if you know, if you're being an asshole to somebody, you're not going to get their business. I hate to tell you that. Uh, but um, so... <coughs> My, so my business is basically structured like this, or my geek is structured like this. We do um, IT support, uh, what is called an MSP, it's a managed services provider, um, <coughs> where we have contracts with small businesses and nonprofits. Um, we charge a flat monthly rate, uh, which is based roughly upon how many computers they have, how difficult of a client I think they're going to be. Um, <laughs> that is a, that's a big thing. Yeah, um, so, and I have like kind of like a calcul, um, I have a spreadsheet that calculates all this for me. Um, and I bump that uh, complication number up if they, uh, if I know. I mean, you can kind of tell, I mean, you get in front of enough people, you kind of know who is going to be a difficult client. And um, so we do the flat monthly rate, but we also do 30 day contracts. Um, and I was talking with someone about this earlier. I hate long-term contracts. 
I look at business relationships like I would any other relationship. If, it, if you and I are not a good fit, I don't want to lock you in. <laughs> That's bad for both of us. So um, I give them the option and I give us the option to exit within 30 days um, if, if we need to. Um, and you know that's actually happened several times because they're not a good fit for us. They can go, and, and that's you know there, there's plenty of other competitors in, in my space that they can go to. Um, and so um, I use a lot of open source technology in, in the business uh, to keep my overhead low, to keep my clients um, you know payments low, uh, not low, but um, cheap. Not cheap. We're not cheap, but affordable. Yes. Uh, and so. Um, and then we just provide like the help desk services, um, uh, the antivirus, spam filtering, backups, on-site, off-site backups, um, everything for them for that, that monthly rate. Does that make sense? Right on. So, yes, sir. What type of what open source software? Uh, so we use um, a lot of Linux. We use a lot of. Uh, uh, um, our virtualization platform uh, is uh, something called Proxmox, which is based off of uh, KVM, which is built into Linux kernel. Uh, <coughs> we use, um, let's see, I use, uh, I use Linux on the desktop a lot, like our thin clients, which I don't know if anybody has a technology background, but uh, WISE, which was bought out by Dell, made uh, thin clients, which their sole purpose is to connect to other computers to work off of. And um, so we just took these little, almost like the Intel Nooks um, type devices, and, and uh, we uh, uh, put Linux on them, and we just put an RDP client on it and set it up, and that's what they use as thin clients. So, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to wrap up. If you have any questions for me, um, I'll be around. So, hope you enjoyed it.